My name is Ian Wright. I'm director of ILRI's research theme on people, livestock and the environment. Today there's been lots of discussions on what we call the impact pathway. How do we get our research products and research outputs through to actually having an impact on the lives of millions or tens of millions of people who live in these dryland areas? And there's been a very rich discussion and many good ideas as to how we achieve that. I've just been part of a discussion about how we work with development organisations and development partners and how can research influence that development agenda to reach these millions of people who depend on drylands. My name is Peter Thorne, I'm a livestock scientist from the UK. I've been with ILRI for six months now. My main interests are in the area of crop livestock integration. Um, so we're really in this workshop trying to get to the level of uh, what are the desirable developmental outcomes from this program and what research outputs will contribute to those outcomes. To, um, as we move into the more marginal areas, issues of risk, vulnerability, resilience become much more important. We have to tread much more carefully and intensifying those kind of systems is, uh, you know, it's not us as researchers who bear the risk, it's the, the, the farmers or the pastoralists who are, who are engaged in them. So we have quite a, a lot of responsibility. Farmers are risk averse wherever they are. If they have a, a vulnerable livelihood to any extent, then they have to be risk averse. And if we produce technologies that don't account for that, then we, we run into this a uh, long-standing problem of lack of adoption. There's no point in us doing the research if it can't be adopted. And that's why we want to tie research outputs into development, developmental outcomes. My name's Jonathan Davis and I work for IUCN, the International Union for Conservation of Nature, responsible for the Global Drylands Programme. Um, well, I think this whole meeting has been quite interesting in that it's brought all these different disciplines together, which is what's necessary. Uh, it resonates with what I'm trying to work on, which is ecosystem scale planning. If you want to protect ecosystems as the basis of life, as the basis of food or whatever uh, welfare, then you can't approach them from, a, from different sectors. You have to treat them as one thing, one entity. And, and figure out how to manage them as such. And people don't deal well in that sort of complexity, especially when you add people and livelihoods and economies into the, into the mix. It's far too complex for people to handle. They need much more simple things to deal with. So, um, yeah, I'm thinking this meeting might actually take us towards that and develop some sort of way, not just to have tools or research, but actually people that can think across all the different systems and at the necessary scale. My name is uh, John Lynham. I've been working in small agriculture uh, here in East Africa for the last 23 years. One of the uh, challenges and opportunities of these, these new CRPs, it really is how does research better integrate into the development process. Um, I, I think we, we have been a little too sort of separate uh, in the past and that necessarily is going to revolve, involve partnerships and you know, you can't work with everybody, so there's going to have to be, you know, some, some, some whittling down to those those partnership arrangements that that actually 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 work. But but you know, that's that's one of the opportunities of these these new CRPs. My name is uh, Florence Wabogo. I'm the chief executive of Africa Harvest. And uh, my contribution is thinking the whole value chain because the adoption of technology does not depend on one thing. It depends on the farmer be able to see, uh, uh, first have information. I think information is absolutely key about the technology. The next thing we want to know is well, can I find those uh, improved breeds of cows or seeds or whatever it is, can I find that? Where do I find it? The next information we want to have is uh, agronomic information, how to feed it to get value about the foliage, about care, about health care, about vaccination, whatever, that information, whether it's an animal, uh, if it's the uh, crops which I'm used to, we call it good agronomic practice, water management, soil fertility, the pest control, and then most important, the market. First market, very important, is the home market. Can I drink the meal? Can I, can I, can I, can I eat at home? And then the surplus so I can generate income. And so the issue of adoption is one very personal with me because I'm working on the 
uh, on the uptake of technology with smallholder farmers. And we realize there's not one thing. We have to think through the whole value chain and begin to think how to remove barriers and bottlenecks in the value chain. We need to take the research which is producing good value goods and then move it to the farmers. But to do it, we need partnerships that can make it work. Uh, my name is Waikri Fumwenda. I work for the uh, National Smallholder Farmer Association of Malawi. There are several factors that uh, I have seen that uh, make this technology not adopt. Uh, one of which is uh, most of them they come as a project, maybe three year uh, project. But we are looking at a technology that for their farmers to appreciate, maybe they appreciate it in the fourth year after the project has already phased out. Issue number two, smallholder farmers, in Malawi, like in other countries in Africa, the land holding side is small. On average, one hectare. From that one, the smallholder farmer is supposed to produce enough to eat, and at the same time, to have money to send the children to school and to hospital. And the, if a technology like integration of fertilizer trees comes in, it means the crop yield will be affected because there will be uh, competition on factors of production. In that case, it means the farmer is losing. If there can be some intervention, as the farmer is losing, maybe the one who is pushing for a technology can compensate for that loss until the project is over. The key drivers of adoption by the smallholder farmers are the principles of extension or gas extension, which are the farmer want to see, the farmer want to hear, and the farmer also want to touch.